from this is probish academy it conducts classes for life science for csir net and jr today we are going to talk, talk about a topic that's called immunity it's a very fascinating topic because there are so many things that get involved in it when we look at immunology the first term that we are faced with is immunity and it's derived from a latin word which is called immunis that means it's helping to lay off the burden that is the role of immune, in your immune system it lays the burden of bacteria viruses fungi off the body and relieves us or secures us from death the second term is immunology it's a science which deals with the study of immune responses now you should always differentiate between the two things the one term is resistance and another term is response these are two different things when you are attacked with a pathogen you should consider yourself uh, your body as it, it is as it is a fortress and now when you look at the fortress the fortress has some doors and windows so let us talk about my mouth so if a bacteria goes inside my uh, gastro uh, gastro tract what will happen is first my saliva it contains lysozymes so this will be the first line of defense and then it will go down my gut the ph takes care of it ph is around 12 i mean 2 now when you look at the other pores say for example your eyes it also secretes lysozyme from the lacrimal glands if you look at your ears it secretes vex then if you look look at the uh, urinary uh, tract it is supported by mucus when you look at your respiratory tract it is supposed it's again helping the mucus is there so what happens is they all act as the first line of defense now i use the example fortress so if you consider your skin as a fortress it measures around two uh, square meters in length so it's a huge organ the largest organ in your body is the skin so what happens it acts as a first line of defense so one thing now immune system will come into play only and only when this first line of defense is breached so let us take an example that you are slicing the apple and the knife cuts you get a knife cut in your hand so what will happen is now the second line of defense will come into play and what is that second line of defense that second line of defense is your innate or inbuilt or you can also name it as acquired sorry innate or inbuilt or you can say non-specific immune response because it will respond to any kind of intrusion whether it will be from virus whether it be from fungi whether it will be from bacteria now the third line of defense I will call it as adaptive or you can call it as acquired so that immune response should be very specific to a particular kind of intrusion now the third term comes is immune system now immune system is made up of many different things it's made up of organs it's made up of tissues it's made up of cells it's made up of proteins it's made up of peptides so let us take the examples of the immune system what are the key players of your immune system so if we talk about organs the organs are divided into two kinds one are pri primary lymphoid organs and next are secondary lymphoid organs the primary lymphoid organ mainly involves like your thymus it is the primary lymphoid organ the secondary lymphoid organ is your spleen when we talk about now tissues these are all the players of immune system now tissues are also of different kinds primary lymphoid tissue for example your bone marrow and then secondary lymphoid tissue for example your lymph nodes then we talk about cells there are around 21 kind of cells 21 types of cells which are responsible for eliciting an immune response whether it is non-specific or whether it is specific and then we have also proteins there are two kinds of proteins one are your antibodies they are responsible for the specific kind of immune response and another are your complement system both antibodies and the complement system they act as opsonizers opsonizers means they act as tagging they tag the cells they tag the intrusion 
into whether it's bacteria or whether it's a virus infected cell or whether it is something else. So they are called taggers. It includes antibodies, AB, also known as immunoglobulins, or it can be a complement system. So what happens is complement system is based on divided when complement response is there it is of three types either it's classical either it's uh, alternate pathway or it's lactin pathway so you should remember it now comes the uh, example of peptides peptides are some of the say your uh, chemicals it can be like uh, cytokines cytokines are of many different types for example there are interferons we fight against viruses there are interleukins which help the cells to communicate so that they can elicit a particular response. Now, these are all the players of the immune system. Now, let us take an example. I started by saying that if you cut your finger, what will be the response? So, there will be two kinds of responses. One, anybody who is coming anybody who is coming to attack you the first response will be your resistance that is the primary immune or innate immune response so for that defense you need a guard for example if E. coli invades you it breaches through the skin it goes inside and there will be a big guard cell who will first encounter the intruding microbes now if you consider this as your macrophage these are, why are they called macrophages? Because they are large eaters, large in size. So once, what bacteria do is, once they invade, they remain under the, they evade the surveillance of the immune system. But once they accumulate in large numbers, they do it by a process called as quorum sensing. It is a critical stage when bacteria starts to screen toxins and then also multiply. So when they reach a critical stage by a process called quorum sensing, they will start releasing toxins. And once they come in contact with this macrophage, what it will do, that it will try to stop the invasion. Now it does it by eating the bacteria. But imagine when so many large number of bacteria are coming, it will not be able to defend itself just by eating. So it needs helping. It needs a helper. So what happens is, Apart from eating the bacteria, what it does is it sends a signal through cytokines. Cytokines are like chemical messengers of the immune system. So what they will do is they will attract the petroleum cells in the blood. And what are those petroleum cells? It's a neutrophil. Neutrophils are petroleum cells. They always flow in the blood from one place to another and they are available everywhere. So what happens is this macrophage will send a signal to the neutrophils to come in. So the neutrophils, they pass the endothelial cell which, is, which lines the blood vessels and then it comes into, inside the tissue. The second important thing macrophage does is it causes inflammation. It sends the signal that causes inflammation. Now what is the first effect of inflammation? First effect is it will try to take out water from the blood so that the battlefield gets wet and now other cells can also come in. So the first response is of macrophages is so one is inflammation so the inflammation sounds an alarm to the whole of the immune system this is done by the macrophage second response it calls on neutrophils neutrophils now why are they called as neutrophils because they stain at a neutral pH and when you look at their nucleus you will find it like this they have a multi lobe nucleus so that's why they are called as neutrophils because they stain at a neutral pH now these are very the, these, the lifespan of these cells is very short so once the macrophage sends the signal to the neutrophils they leave the blood vessels and they get inside the battlefield where macrobes are already there and it acts so vigorously that it starts releasing a lot of toxins and these toxins not only kill the bacteria but also kill the our normal cells that's why they need to be short lived that's why their life is only 5 days or 5 to 7 days and then 
when you find the if if you encounter pus, what is pus? These are the carcasses of neutrophils. When neutrophils die, they give pus. So what happens? Inflammation and then neutrophils come in. They start releasing toxins. Try to defend themselves. But consider that the invasion is very large, like the invasion of US in the Iraq. When the invasion is so large, macrophage does a third thing. It invites dendritic cells. Now the dendritic cells are the brain of the immune system. They are the brain cells of the immune system. Why I call them so? And why are they named as dendritic cells? It's because their structure resembles the dendrites of the neurons. That's what they are named after, dendritic cells. Now, why I call them as brain cells of the immune system is, once these things happen, the third thing, these dendrites, they come inside to the invading area, I mean the tissue where they are there, and then they act as macrophages, they first digest the, uh, I mean, the bacteria, and they are also called as professional antigen presenting cells. I will tell you why. What they do is, once they take it out, Once they take the pathogen inside, they present them on their MHC, MHC type 1. It is like an identity card. MHC is called as major histocompatibility complex. It is present in every cell. And in case of macrophages, the MHC1 is, the MHC1, they have both MHC1 and MHC2. But antigens are present, uh, presented by on MHC2. That is major histocompatibility complex 2. Now what does this do? What does dendritic cell do? It will call a backup because the inflammation is not able to do anything, neutrophils are not able to do anything. Now dendritic cells, they try to go inside the lymph nodes, to the nearest lymph nodes and it takes around one day for any uh, dendritic cell to go to the lymph nodes. So once it reaches the lymph nodes, in lymph nodes what they do is, this is your dendritic cell, it is present in antigens and it also has a cell surface receptor. So, it, now the T cells come into play. T cells because they are they originate from the thymus. So, there are different kinds of T cells that the God has bestowed us with. But when it is present in a specific antigen, there will be a specific T cell that will respond to this dendritic cell. So, this cell will bind to the receptor and at the same time, this is a T cell. It will bind to a receptor and at the same time it will also identify the antigen that is presented by the dendritic cells. So what it does, the T cell starts multiplying. It starts making of its own copies. And when, once it starts making um, uh, many copies, what it will do next is, there will be, there can be three kinds of responses. Once the T cells are generated, let us talk about them. So what is the first response when the T cells are there? T cells can differentiate into T killer cells and they can go into the battlefield. If it is cytotoxic T cells. Number two, what they do is they can produce memory T cells. Memory in the sense that they will have a memory if the intrusion, if the same bug comes next time, the immune response will be more faster. So there are memory T cells. And then third kind of things. The third kind of thing is, what they do is, they can either go to the battlefield and kill the bacteria or they can remain in the memory form and the third part is, they can communicate with other cells. They have a strong role in communication. Now if we go back to the battlefield, the battlefield is here, so in the T cells will only respond after say one or two days because it takes a dendritic cell around one day to go to the leaf node and then they have to replicate also. Now what happens in the battlefield, we are about to lose the battle because macrophages are not able to do anything, neutrophils are dying every five days, inflammation response is there, but still the bugs are so large in number, our immune system is still at a critical stage. So what happens, some kind of T cells, they come to the battlefield now the macrophage is very exhausted, they want to rest, but this T cell tells them, please keep on fighting, because if they die, the bugs are going to win. So it gives them a signal that to the neutrophils as well as to the macrophages to keep on fighting 
until a backup comes. And what is that backup? That backup is T killer cells and that backup is antibodies. So what happens when T cells get activated? So T cells now So what happens to the T cells? So once T cells are activated, they can differentiate into two kinds of cells. T helper cell 1 and T helper cell 2. These are the T helper cells. They differentiate into two kinds of cells once they are activated by binding to an antigen. And this T helper 1, it will activate CD8 cytotoxic T cell. On the other cell, the T helper cell 2, it will activate the B cells. Why they are called B cells? They were found in Bursa fabricus, but you can also tell them because they are synthesized in the bone marrow. So what they do is, they can secrete huge amounts of antibodies. And these antibodies are now secreted into the battlefield. And once they are in the battlefield, what they do is, the first thing that they do is, they opsonize the bacteria. Opsonize means tagging the bacteria. So they tag it for the macrophages. Now it means they are making the bacteria more tastier for the, uh, the, for the intruding bacteria to kill them. And this opsonization is brought about by antibodies and also complement system. Now if you talk of, of antibodies, there are different kinds. They are also called as immunoglobulins because they are globular in structure. So now we have five types of immunoglobulins. That is G, A, M, E, and D. Immunoglobulin G, A, M, E, and D. Immunoglobulin M is responsible for the primary response. So when antibodies are secreted in the first place, it will be immunoglobulin M. And when it is a second response, at that time, it will be immunoglobulin G. So this is how the immune system coordinates itself. So in short we can say, if I summarize all, what has happened that if we are, as, if we behave as, uh, I mean the fortress, and there are different kinds of, first, the first kind of defense is our skin, it's our mucus, it's our chemicals that we screen, it can be pH. The second line of defense is the innate or inbuilt, or you can say non-specific uh, immune system. That is not specific for any particular bug, but it can face bacteria, it can face fungi, it can face the viruses. Now, if it is, I am talking about bacteria, in that case, the secondary response triggers, and that is the third line of defense. It can be called as adaptive or acquired because it's not here, it's acquired once the bug is encountered. So, we call it as acquired or adaptive or secondary response. This is the third line of defense. So, this is all about the basics of immune system. Hope you like the video. Please subscribe us and if you have any questions you can ask the questions at Pro Ubish channel the video we are uploading on. Thank you very much.